I'm the coach, Sean Tompkins. Uh, welcome to my house, my family. This is Patsy. She's uh, my protector, obviously. Uh, we're gonna do a day with me. Ha hang out with the gang and, uh, and check it out. Follow myself, Sam Stout around, and uh, let you guys get tapped in with the Team Tompkins household. Come on up, guys. Let's go wake up Sam Stout and get him ready for his camp day. He's got a big day ahead of him, last hard week. And he's up, and he's up, and he's up. <laughs> uh, you know, I started um, martial arts, traditional martial arts when I was six years old. Um, and by the time I was 16, I was the youngest black belt in Canada. And uh, my instructor started gi started giving me more opportunities to, to instruct and to work at, at his uh, karate school. And one of the first programs I worked with was a children's program. And I did that program for probably about four years. And while I was developing the kids program at our karate school and working with the kids and stuff, I just, I really started to fall in love with the, 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 the leadership role and being able to pass on, you know, the love and the knowledge that I have for the sport. And it just kind of stuck with me all, all through my career, you know. This is our, uh, this is our fighter room where we do uh, all of our relaxing or uh, fight studying, obviously the big screen for everybody. Some of the belts of my past champions that I've trained and uh, some inspiration, the posters around us, some of the guys that uh, my guys are either trying to be like or trying to beat. So this is where it all happens. This is uh, the offside of, uh, of getting punched and kicked in the face. You know, a typical week at our house is um, pretty routine. You know, people are getting up early in the morning, getting breakfast, going to the gym. I usually come to the gym in the morning and work out while these guys are here. Uh, then we all go home, have lunch, you know, the guys relax, I try and keep track of what's going on at the house and get things done, uh, run some errands. You know, um, having the, the fighters be, be, you know, part of my house and, and, and live with us when they're in training camp is actually something that, you know, when I moved out here, it was, it was a goal of mine to create something like this. Now, you know, we've been here for a couple of years and we're at the point of where it's been great, it's been a lot of fun. But now it's time that we, you know, we've moved on and we actually have another house for the fighters to live in. Now, there are some guys that have been very close to me and my wife for, for a lot of years. Um, you know, the Mark Hominicks, the Chris Ordeskis, the Sam Stouts that, you know, we really raised in the sport from around the ages of 12 to 14 and they always stay with us. We have all these different guys stay at our house and they really become like family. And you're there every day that they're training, you see them, you know, go through their ups and downs and so you really get nervous for all of them. I'm a person that, you know, I never leave my job, so it, it almost kind of comforts me to have the fighters there and to be able to, to live day in and day out with them. There, to be a coach, there's a lot of hats that are involved to be worn, you know, and, and it's like it's been said before, you know, it's the, the psychologist, the dietitian, you know, the, the big brother, the father figure, you know, there's all these things that, that go with, within being a coach and, and, and being a, a high level coach. So um, I enjoy that though, you know, it's something that, that I feel it, it brings out the best in me. I did 47 professional fights as a, as a kickboxer. I've competed in mixed martial arts, but I've always went back to you know passing the sport on and, and working with others. So it's just it was just one of those things. I, I don't think that uh, there was a, ever a time as a kid I, I dreamed of being the world champ, but I always wanted to be the coach of the world champ. Emily is a special person. A bottom off. line, you know, she she was born to. To, to be part of this just like I was born to be part of this, you know, even if she didn't think, didn't, didn't know anything about it when she was 12 years old. When I met her, you know, and, and she got involved in my life, we just knew we were on the right path. It was love at first sight. I saw him and he was kind of the life of the party and he came and talked to me, I think for 10 minutes and I just never stopped thinking about him and the next time I saw him, he asked me out. And the rest is history. She obviously, I think, has an undying love for, for myself and, and Sam and for what we do and and that's a special thing. It's not an easy job. I travel a lot, you know, but, but she takes the time to make sure she's a big part of it, you know, and I appreciate it. The fighters love her to death, you know, she's like a big sister to all of them. Um, and she makes it part of her life, you know. She, she, she t goes the extra mile to take care of them and, you know, she, she knows when there's something wrong, you know, and there's, there's always going to be problems in a sport and a business like this and she knows when to step it up and when, when to step back. And, she, she just, she, like I said, she's a special person, you know. I really enjoy having a supportive role. 
Um, I have, you know, one of the best trainers in the world as a husband. I have, uh, you know, my brother's a fighter for the UFC. And also we have a, a bunch of guys at the house that are always training and coming and going. You know, Vegas is a transient place. People come to train here, but they're never really from here. And um, I think that all of these guys need somebody, you know, at their house or, you know, in their life at least that is willing to help them out whenever they need it. They have a really stressful job and uh, I think that they need someone who is going to be there to kind of, you know, do whatever they need. They need kind of an assistant and that's kind of what I've become. I, I, I don't know if I could have married anybody else that would have been as uh, dedicated to me and, and what I do as she has and I, I respect it. I look at what she's left, she, you know, she picked up, she left her job as a school teacher in Canada. She left her family, you know, to, to be here with me and, and, and it's much appreciated and, and I think that it's who she is. I'm madly in love with the guy, but don't tell him. You know, having, having Sam Stout um, coming up with a big fight in the UFC, it's always a little extra stress to me. We, you know, we are family, you know, he, in more aspects than just the word, you know, he really is my brother-in-law. His parents put him in my hands, you know, and, and it's not exactly the safest sport in the world. He's not exactly the safest fighter in the world, you know, he goes out and he has wars. And I, it's a lot of stress on me. I have to learn to deal with it um, the right way come, you know, fight week because that's when ultimately all this stuff, you know, you, you can act as cool as you want, but I guarantee you when I'm at home or when I'm on my own, I'm, I'm thinking about all these things that I have to make sure are, are right and you know all these problems that may arise and how to deal with them and you know it, with Sam it, it's that it, it's it's on such a higher level with him it, 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 it's it's a real good feeling the second that fight is yeah. over and it's just like Tom, a deep breath up, you know let's you know now we can put that one in the fast I hope Joe Silva doesn't call me for a few weeks to tell me when Sam's fighting again When it comes to tattoos and stuff, I'm not really, I, I, I don't really think of it like, uh, it's not a, the cool thing to do to me. You know, I've always liked tattoos and, and it's more for myself. A lot of people come up and talk to me about my tattoos and ask questions. And I'm, I, I'm almost kind of more uncomfortable with that conversation than I am with anything else because tattoos, tattoos to me are really um, personal. You know, and, and, and to explain them to people, you know, I, I can say, you know, obviously the coach, um, is it's part of me, you know, branding myself as a coach, and I really, you know, I, the guys. I just after years of being, they don't even. I don't even sometimes know if they know my name. They just call me coach all the time, so it made sense. And you know, it, so they, you know, obviously I can talk about that. But a lot of the artwork, you know, the Japanese culture and stuff that I have on my arms kind of brings me back to, you know, growing up in traditional martial arts. And you know, we we have a tattoo all of us on our leg, the Japanese kanji that's fight spirit pride. It's a gift that I give to all my fighters when they when they reach a certain level, um, and it's something that I you know I'm the first one that, that that had it put on me, and I actually have the tattoo artist trace it off of my leg each time and put make sure it gets put directly onto to my uh, students. You know, it's a special thing. But like I said, it, to me, I don't put tattoos on me to to be like, oh hey, look at that. You know, Tompkins got really cool tattoos. I, I'm really actually kind of uncomfortable talking about them. It's a personal thing to me, and it's it's something that means a lot it's it's kind of like um, it's like the ultimate dedication or commitment Well guys, we're doing our tap in. We're almost done. Uh, end of the night, finish our training. We're done. All kinds of media stuff today. I've got punched in the head for everybody. I've punched people in the head for people. And uh, now we're gonna unwind a little bit, do a little bit of bowling with my, uh, my, my, all my, my best friends, guys from the team, my wife obviously. And uh, we're just gonna have some fun. Maybe have a beer, have a slice of pizza and bowl some bowling balls.
I'm the coach Sean Tompkins. I hope you guys had a great time today tapping into uh, my life on a, you know, just another day in the life, I guess. And I uh, appreciated you guys coming out, checking out, seeing what it's all about. But uh, I'm pretty tired of having this camera in my face. I think that uh, we all need a little break from each other. So good luck in your training, good luck in your life, and I'll see you guys around.